we're going to open with hymn number 78. We're going to do just verses 1, 2, and 5. <laughs> I want to welcome you to the house of the Lord today. Uh, we've got the sun shining. It is beautiful outside. My name is Mark Aarons and uh, I'm presiding. We have a, a very full service, um, but uh, we know that it will be uh, spiritual if you allow God to work within your hearts um, as we uh, go through the service itself. It is um, a service that uh, we think will be meaningful, both in many ways, but uh, it will, as the uh, theme for today, it will strengthen your testimony. There are uh, those that are involved in the service uh, include Chris Jocelyn will be bringing the opening prayer, um, Lisa and Susan will have a mission prayer testimony. Um, the Hushins family will be doing um, the prayer for peace um, and uh, doing that in a manner that sometimes we don't always do. Um, today's message on that is being brought by Dale Ward. Uh, the Disciples Generous Response by Steve Boley and um, Jane McDonald will be giving us our closing prayer and sending forth. I want to wish everybody uh, a welcome if it's those that are on Zoom um, that uh, you also uh, can in your hearts participate with us. Our welcome. Our faith tradition's name, Community of Christ, tells at least two important things. We are followers of Jesus Christ, in whose name we gather to worship, learn, and be strengthened on our faith journeys in Christ's mission, and we do it in community. Today, we have the privilege of hearing about sharing testimonies and sharing with one another regarding not only racial justice, but fairness, respect, kindness to all individuals. As a community, we need to listen to each other because it helps us practice 
or strengthen our thoughts so that when opportunities occur, we can tell the story of Jesus and we will be ready. We proceed with our next hymn, hymn number 112. As the psalm stated, we want to sing out, we want to declare um, how God is working within our lives and what needs we may have. This is our time for sharing of our joys and concerns. Let's start with concerns first. If you'll pray with me on that. Heavenly Father, we have brought concerns those that have needs, those that uh, are may not be uh, in the best of health or have other uh, concerns within their lives, both for themselves individually and with their families can be troubling. But we also, Lord, uh, have been blessed with uh, uh, some joys that uh, uh, have been brought forward. Just like you have created each of us individually, you have given in our lives uh, times that uh, may not be as well off or um, may have uh, uh, some concerning moments, but also uh, the basis of being uh, having joys that uh, can bring us forward within uh, go within the community and show that uh, your love does shine through ultimately. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. We're gonna continue on with hymn number 271. <laughs> Oh, 
Will you pray with me, please? Oh God of peace, oh God of justice, oh God of mercy and gracious living, thank you for this time that we can meet together and praise your name and give you thanks, give you the full attention of our minds and our bodies as we worship together to celebrate that you have given us the gift of your son, you've given us the gift of your life. Let us extend our understanding today through this service. Let us understand or expand our compassion and our journey towards peace, risking something new, renewed and encouraged to be your hands and feet. Thank you for letting us meet and listen and learn. In Jesus name, amen. Today we are starting an element in our worship services that we are going to call Mission Prayer Moment. I know it says Mission Prayer Testimony, but that word testimony scares me sometimes. And while um, our moments will probably be shared as testimonies, um, a moment doesn't have to be uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a, you don't have to feel scared that you have to get up and say something like really powerful because moments are powerful too. So last week, Chris Judge shared with us an opportunity to begin a discernment journey using the mission prayer. And we, the pastor leadership team, which we're all right here, <laughs> um, are really excited about that. Not only because we can use this to strengthen our relationships with God, but also as a congregation, we can begin to discern where God is calling us and how we can respond to that. Last week for the children's moment, there were some items that were used that the kids recognized as coming from Mr. Potato Head. You guys remember that? Yeah. So we're gonna use Mr. Potato Head as a reminder for the kids and ourselves to use your eyes, your ears, your feet, your arms to awaken, to awaken us to those around us that may need God's love in their lives. So today, Susan is going to share her mission prayer moment testimony. And every week we will be inviting someone to do that. Just a little tidbit. When I took these prayers to the... Um, um, the UPS store to have laminated. The lady at the desk looked at that and read them. She goes, wow, that's something we all need to read every day. And I thought, whoa, girl, way to go. <laughs> but anyway, I, I sense that this is going to be a real learning process for me because I cannot sit quietly very long without the mind wandering to things that need to be done or just anything. And as I looked at the prayer, I'm always thinking of this is when we're out there amongst people, either at work or shopping or at store, wherever. As I read this, it's like, where will your spirit lead me today amongst, you know, all those people? Help me to be ready, awake and ready to respond. But one day last week, I knew I wasn't going anywhere. I was going to be at home all day. And I thought, how does this then relate? I'm not going to be around anybody. But as I was, after I read that and tried to sit quietly, God got my attention before my mind started wandering. And he impressed upon me two names, two different people. And they were people that I had just met last summer and since then had maybe been in contact with once since then. So I really did not know them, but yet their names were given to me. And so I prayed for them. And to be bold, then I did have a phone number of one of them. So I texted them and said, you're just on my mind. I'm thinking of you. I wanted to drop in and say, hi, hope all is well. The other one I'm still thinking about, how can I be bold with that one? Because I don't have their phone number. So it's going to take a person-to-person -person contact, which is out of my comfort zone. But I'm going to try it because I know the spirit will go with me. 
But it's just those little things, I think, that's a growing experience for us that we can look for. How is God reaching out to us individually and as congregation? Will you please bow your heads as we say our prayer for peace today? Joyful God, what joy you must get from creating and blessing. We hear the promise that your grace is abundant, that you lavish it on us generously. Through the example of Jesus Christ giving his life, you challenge us to give of all of our work of peace. Jesus taught that it is in losing ourselves in the gospel of peace that we are saved. It's a tall order. The irony of this requires us to act in faith. So today we are praying for the strength of your Holy Spirit to empower us to do your work of living in the path of Christ, the way of peace. There is so much need for people who find joy in the work of nonviolence and peace. We would be among of those who give themselves for the cause, cleanse us of even thoughts of violence, Stir us to seek cooperation rather than competition, peace rather than conflict. Inspire us to lose ourselves in the cause of justice. Don't let us falter when the challenge seems too great. Amen. Loving God, we ask you to expand our hearts and minds so that we may see the with and breath of your love. Help us see the needs around us. Show us ways to peace. Guide us to work to preserve peace so that hunger may be ended. Make us tools of peace in the name of Jesus, so be it. Hopeful God, you must be hopeful. You trust us with your creation and the gospel. You invite us as disciples of Jesus Christ to your mission. It feels doable. Then we think about the challenges in the world. Powerful forces disrupt our personal peace and threaten the earth. It's all pretty overwhelming, God. So we turn you to our prayer with hope. Help us experience peace in our hearts and minds because it is from Christ. Peace must be possible. Make it so that we pray in the Jesus' name. Amen. Peaceful God, this morning we pray for those persons and communities who are grieving for family and friends lost or injured in tragic events. We pray that your peaceful being will extend to their hearts this morning. It is only in your peace that we find real comfort and consolation. How often we misunderstand your teaching. We think that you want our side to win in games, elections, in war, because we pray for victory. Guide us in your ways of peace, we pray. Help us find those pathways and motivate us to live them. Help us find the energy and enthusiasm and peaceful cooperation that we find in competition and conflict. Help us recognize the value of human life in the other, whether she is a competitor or he is an enemy. We offer these petitions in your name, 
of your son, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Can I have the kids come forward? Maybe just right up in here. Fantastic. Today, we have a theme. Do you remember what I stated the theme was today? Anybody? We've been singing a little bit about it. It's like telling a story. What's the same name or a word that we use if we're kind of telling um, a story from uh, what we have from church? Is it testimony? Does anybody know what testimony means? It's kind of a long word. What to speak? A speech? It is on that sometimes. Testimony also can be just coming up and giving a hug to somebody. That might be something that they uh, need at the time. And so it's a testimony um, that uh, gives some love back, right? And it may not have words always, but a lot of times it does. A lot of times it will be something that we're telling others about. 
Where do testimonies sometimes come from? In fact, most of the time they do. Disciple. What about, go ahead. Peace. Fantastic. You guys are doing really well. How testimony come about. So I have a little bit in love too. Yep. I'm going to show you something. Testimonies on that can be different ways. So pretend that this balloon is my testimony. I'm going to put you in the distance. Okay. For patient, we get three rewards. <laughs> Sometimes with our testimonies, we get rewards to others. But I wanted to show you this because if God is not involved with me in my life at the time, what happens with this balloon? What do balloons do? They blow up. Sometimes do they, if they have helium in them, do they fly? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I have no testimony to this on that. If God's not involved with me, if you could go straight down. Mm -hmm. um, but if God's in our, involved in our lives, so if we put God in our lives, what happens to the balloon? It's bigger. It's bigger. You're right. So, but what happens if we have some testimonies to share? And if we do, and we have God involved, oh, Now, now I'm kind of old. So I got lots of things in my life. You may not have as many as me. Okay? But doesn't mean that you don't have any testimonies. But today it means strengthening your testimony. And testimony means, I'm going to go right back to you. What was it you stated? Okay. What was it that you stated um, that a testimony is? A speech or a talk. And what happens if our testimonies, we can keep it inside ourselves, can't we? Or we can, we can share them. So what happens if we do something like that? Yep, the smaller the hole. So if it gets really big, what happens if We can share our testimonies in a small spot, or like when I released the balloon, it went all over the place and could have maybe if I blew it up bigger or had a bigger one, I could have got back to the back of the church. So what I'm telling you is we want to share our testimonies as much as possible. So. I have some balloons that, because you guys are small, 
can't do it here, but you can do it when you get home on that. If you pull this little slip, it brings a light. So you're going to bring God's light into your heart. We can have your parents blow up the balloon, and it will light up the balloon itself, okay? So each of you can have one of these. Well, good morning. Man, that's kind of hard act to follow. Bursting balloons? Oh, boy. They always say don't ever follow uh, children or pets, right? So, well, this morning our theme is strengthen your testimony. And I hope, maybe like Lisa said, maybe that's a big word. And sometimes we're kind of afraid of it, although the kids seem to get the idea, didn't they? It's about that light inside of us. So the scripture today, the theme scripture is from uh, 1 Corinthians. And uh, it's a, a letter that the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. So I'm going to read that for you. And I'm going to read it here because it's in bigger print there. I got, I got the official word right here, but it's in bigger print here. So Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sothenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all of those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on that day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the partnership of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Paul was writing that letter to the church in Corinth, the big city in, in Greece at the time. But I really want you to pay attention to that line that he said in there, because he was writing it to everybody that meets in Christ's name. You know, he said to the church in Corinth, but also together with all those in every place. So we can think that today he was writing that letter to us too. And so this idea of strengthening our testimony, you know, Paul gives thanks because he says he really appreciates the strong testimony of Christ that he sees in those people in Corinth. You know, testimony is that, that witness, right? To, to, give, to give a witness, to give a story, an account that supports that evidence of Christ. You know, what do you say when somebody asks you what church you go to? What, what's your response when you get on that, that four-hour cross-country plane ride and the person beside you says, uh, so why do you believe in Jesus Christ? What's, what's your testimony? What's your answer? Well, hopefully this morning, we can make that be not so scary, and we can strengthen that. You know, when I think about that question, if I'm on an airplane, and I got to give that answer, I always use the analogy of TV series, Cheers. Now, I know that's kind of dating me. I'm getting kind of old. I don't know if anybody else remembers that. Janine kind of doesn't like it when I use this, but she's preaching in Indianola today, so I can use it. You know, she, it, it, it's about a, a, you know, a little local community that meets in a restaurant, we'll call it, okay? But what matters is not so much what they're serving at this restaurant. What matters is the community that they create, this diverse group of people, I want to uh, help get us in the mood. Lane, if you can play our little audio clip. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name And they're always glad you came You wanna be where you can see Our troubles are all the same You wanna be where everybody knows your name 
See, I like, to, I like that because when I hear that song and I look at these lyrics, making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name, and they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see our troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. And when I start to describe the church I go to to someone who asks me, I like to use that analogy because we're not a big giant mega church, but we are a church where everybody knows your name. And that gets us start of the way there. That's part of the question. But what if somebody goes a little deeper and they say, well, what does your church believe? What are, what are, your, what are your fundamentals? You know, what are your, what's your testimony there? And we've got a lot of good things. We've got a lot of good resources. You know, we've got enduring principles. We've got basic beliefs. And these little pamphlets, they're at the back in the foyer if you want to pick them up on your way out. And we should all know these, right? We should all know these. These are good. We've got the really big owner's manual right here, right? The user's manual, the Bible that, that tells us about those beliefs. We've got all that. But, you know, did any of you get any new electronics at Christmas? You got some new stuff, a new phone or something? What'd you get? A what? A 3D printer. Very cool, Andrew. That's very cool. Well, oh, and there's, look at there's a car right there. Somebody's got a car driving right up the center. New electronics. That's great. Uh, the, the new little electronic gadget that I got to play with uh, this year was, was the new Wi-Fi router here for the church. So we got great Wi-Fi right now. But you know, when you open up those boxes, well, what'd you guys get? What'd you get? A what? A surplus chair. Bungee cord chair. Oh, things are obviously happening at the Doppler's place. This is cool. What'd you get? Oh, good. A camera. That's awesome. Well, you know, whenever you get anything like that, there's always a big, you know, usually a user's manual in there. But lately, when you open up the packaging, do you see they're getting real smart? And they usually have a little piece of paper with a little yellow or red thing on it that says, start here. Here's your easy setup guide, right? It's your, it's your quick, quick get started guide, okay? Your quick startup guide. Well, you know what? We have one of those too. Do you want to know what the quick startup guide is for the community of Christ theology? It's all right in front of you. Go ahead, pick up your quick startup guide. It's called Community of Christ Sings. So if you want to know, if you want to have a testimony about what Community of Christ believes in, I want you to look at this quick startup guide. Let's open it up right to about the middle. I want you to turn to 273. Okay? Because if you want to know community of Christ is all about. If you want to have a testimony, I want you to look at this quick startup guide. I want you to read with me 273. Draw the circle wide. Draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. It says, God is the still point of the circle, round whom all creation turns, nothing lost but held together in God's gracious arms. It says, let our hearts touch far horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our loving know no others, faithful to God's call. Let the dream, dream be larger than we ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ be in us, open every door. If you want to start understanding what community of Christ is all about, it's about opening every door. Okay. Turn your pages, very next one, 274. In our quick start guide, it tells us, God, we gather as your people to raise our song above as we dare to claim the promise of your love. Though the day may not be here yet, we trust it soon will be when your children will be free. Oh, may our hearts and minds be opened, fling the church doors open wide. May there be room enough for everyone inside, for in God, there is a welcome. In God, we all belong. May that welcome be our song. If you want to tell somebody 
about the theology of the church you go to, about what community of Christ proclaims. It's that we all belong, that in God there is a welcome, that we are called to open the doors wide place. We sing for children that one day they may be free. We sing for generations yet to be that they never have a reason to doubt that they are blessed. May they in your love find rest. God, we're working for a future when children far and wide can live their lives with dignity and pride as they grow in strength and stature. May they join us hand against all hate we stand. For in God, there is a welcome. In God, we all belong. That's what our quick start guide says. One more page, please. 275. Leftover people in leftover places, troubled, disabled, the needy and sad, scavenging crumbs from society's plenty, sick to the soul when their life has gone bad. These are the ones in God's upside down kingdom, called to be worthy and called to the feast. Soup kitchen people invited to banquet, valued as greatly as royal and priest. If you want to know what community of Christ stands for, it says we worship and follow a Christ who turns things upside down. He says that soup kitchen people are just as important as rich, famous people. He tells us that the leftover people are who we're called to invite in, to draw the circle wide, to fling the doors open. That's what our theology tells us we're about. Leftover people, disposable people, locked into prisons of drugs and despair, poverty's children and poverty spiral, locked out of learning and earning their share. These are the ones in God's upside down kingdom. These are the Christ in their shabby disguise. These are the least and the highly unlikely given a hope and new light in their eyes. Our quick start guide tells us that that's the community we need to be creating. Okay, one more. Next page, 276. This one's kind of obvious. All are welcome. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell hearts to learn and forgive. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. If you want to have a testimony, if you want to understand what community of Christ is about, are you hearing the message? All are welcome. We're called to create communities where all are lifted up. So yes, making our way in the world today takes everything we've got. Sometimes you want to get away to a place where everybody knows your name. That's what we're about. Drawing a wide circle, flinging the church doors open wide so that everyone is welcome. A place where everyone knows your name. A place to recoup, re-energize, to live life more abundantly. A place where all are welcome. A place, a community that proclaims Jesus' model of an upside-down kingdom, where the soup kitchen people are valued just as highly as royal beast where people participate in the peace and justice community in their neighborhoods, where people serve the homeless, feed the hungry, where members hop on a plane and deliver passports to church friends so that they can continue their journey, where potlucks are shared, where scriptures are studied and discussions engaged to talk about how we put into practice living a Christ-focused life where children are celebrated and a stuffed Jesus sits at the back with the kids so the kids can play. A place where everyone agrees to start each day with a prayer. God, where will your spirit lead me today? 
Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. If you want to strengthen your testimony, it's all just right there in the Quick Start Guide. It's right here in this community that we create. And like Paul said to his letter in the Corinthians, his greeting was not just to them, but was together with all those that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So knowing his intent, I'm going to take some poetic liberty, and I think the Apostle Paul will let me get away with this. I'm going to adapt his letter just a little bit so that we hear it anew this morning. To the Northwest community of Christ that is in Des Moines, Iowa, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give my thanks to my God always for you because of the grace that God has been given you in Christ Jesus, for in every way you've been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony have been of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you're not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on that day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the partnership of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May we realize that we have all the gifts we need to grow in our path of discipleship. May we strengthen our testimony of a living Christ, of a welcoming church, we, may we be willing to risk something new, to be a blessing to those in need. We have been 
given frequent counsel about the need to be generous disciples, but we are not the only ones to hear that message. Many centuries ago, God's people were given these words from Exodus 21, verse 19. The choicest of the first fruits of your ground shall you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. I encourage you to think about the what are the, the first fruits of your life. The um, most of us don't harvest crops in the fall, and um, so what are our first fruits? I want to suggest that this month we're going to be getting W-2 forms or 1099s, and that to me represents our first fruits. Not maybe not well, our fruit first fruits for the year. So uh, you might think about that as we share our mission ties, either by placing money in the plates or through e-tithing, use this time to thank God for the many gifts received in life. Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gracefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. Will the ushers come forward, please? Receive our offerings. Would you pray? Giving God, we thank you in this moment for the uh, rich testimonies you give us through your, your love and your grace. We respond with, uh, with our first fruits of our lives to, uh, and, and our lives together. We pray your blessing on both the gifts and the the use they will be the good they will do in the uh, in the world through uh, the missions that they fund. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
please bow with me. Dear loving God, send us out from this service with a conviction to ask daily, God, where will your spirit lead today? May we have open hearts and open eyes to be fully awake and ready to respond. Lord, help us this week to have the courage to risk something new because it is always our desire to be a blessing of your love, hope, joy, and peace to the people we meet. Bless us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved community of Christ, do not just speak and sing of Zion. Live, love, and share as Zion with those who strive to be visibly one in Christ, among whom there are no poor or oppressed. The promises of God in Jesus Christ are sure that the Holy Spirit will be given given grace to the things that we have been asked to do, go and testify of what you know.